Hi KC Preppers! Today's lesson is going to be on tone and mood. Tone and mood both deal with the emotions centered around a piece of writing, but today you will learn how they are quite different. Tone is simply the author's attitude toward the subject. You can recognize the tone or attitude by the language and word choice the author uses. His language will reveal his perspective and opinion that is, whether it is positive or negative about the subject. Tone must be inferred through the use of descriptive words. Tone is expressed through the words and details the author selects. To determine the author's tone, you must notice how these words and details are used within the writing. The following statements each express different attitudes about a shabby apartment. Five different tones are used, optimistic, bitter, tolerant, sentimental, and objective. Number one, this place may be shabby, but since both of my children were born while we lived here, it has a special place in my heart. The tone is sentimental. It has a special place in my heart, expresses tender emotions. Number two, this isn't the greatest apartment in the world, but it's not really that bad. The tone is tolerant. The words, not really that bad, show that the writer accepts the situation while recognizing that it could be better. Number three, if only there were some decent jobs out there, I wouldn't be reduced to living in this miserable dump. The tone is bitter. The writer resents a situation that forces him or her to live in a miserable dump. Four, this place does need some repairs but I'm sure the landlord will be making improvements sometime soon. The tone is optimistic. The writer is expecting the apartment to be improved soon. And five, this is the apartment we live in. It provides shelter. The tone is objective. The writer does not express feelings about the apartment. He simply states the facts. Now we will talk about mood. Mood is the overall feelings or emotions that are created in the reader. The power of the pen can move mountains. Authors move their readers' moods through the choice of words and level of detail. Here is an example of mood. During the holidays, my mother's house glittered with decorations, hummed with preparations. We ate cookies and drank cider while we helped her wrap packages and trim the tree. We felt warm and excited, listening to Christmas carols and even singing along sometimes. We would tease each other about, a ter about our terrible voices and then sing even louder. What is the mood of this passage? Is it content? Happy? How do we know? The words warm, excited, glittered are all used by the author. Here is another example of mood. After New Year's, the time came to put all the decorations away and settle in for a long, cold winter. The house seemed to sigh as we boxed up its finery. The tree was dry and brittle and now waited forlornly by the side of the road to be picked up. What is the mood of this passage? Is it dreary, depressed? How do we know? The author uses words like cold, sigh, brittle, forlornly. So remember that tone is the author's attitude or opinion and mood is the feeling and emotions the reader gets from the writing. Thanks for watching my five minute Casey prep session.